Hi, lovely to meet you. Nice and lovely to see you, you again, Warren. Yeah. Um, so when you guys began filming this in 2010, where did you expect to see the film go at that stage? I certainly didn't expect to see Panty on the side of a bus in Campbell Street. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we just knew we had a great character because I'd known Rory for many years at that point and I'd worked with Panty doing p uh, posters for the Alternative Miss Ireland. So we knew we had a great character uh, and somebody that was always going to be very politically engaged. So it was just a really a question of seeing what happened next and, and uh, getting enough of the backstory and just seeing what happened next. We didn't know exactly how big it would be until it all happened. What was it like for you having the cameras kind of follow you around or were you used to that? I, I, it's absolutely fine for me when it's panty because that's sort of designed for that. But when it's the Rory stuff, I, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not comfortable with it. But the other thing is, of course, is that in the first few years, he had hardly any money to make it. So he would disappear off and I wouldn't see him for six months until he got a bit more money from whoever, you know, wherever. Or we didn't get any money. Yeah, and then, he'd, anyway. then he'd turn back <laughs> up and say, OK, I have another few pence, you know, so he'd make another little bit. So there were long periods where I didn't see him, yeah. certainly in the first couple of years. Then, you know, when I got into trouble, suddenly all this money started being thrown at him to finish his film. Yeah, so moments like that, and especially kind of when you were filming stuff around the, the noble call, they became such pivotal moments in the whole marriage equality campaign and in sort of LGBT history in Ireland. When you were filming those at the time, how did they resonate with you then? Did you realise that they were going to become so influential or was it just a, let's see how this goes kind of thing? We, you know, we went down, we shot the noble, speech, noble call speech in the Abbey. I remember texting Rory afterwards saying, well done, you know, that went really well. I don't think anybody had an idea how big that was going to go. We put it up on YouTube the next day, and within a week or so, there were 600,000 views, and the Pet Shop Boys had made a single out of it and had been translated into 20 languages. You know, it just it took on a life of its own, and a lot of things to do with the story have, have, have had similar kind of uh, arcs, you might say. Mm. Yeah, um, I kind of expected to, to end the film with marriage equality and you know the, the victory of the referendum because it seemed like kind of a nice tidy ending but it seemed that the, you know your actually your personal victory was when you went back to Ballon Robe so what was that like for you and, and how did that that kind of whole incident come about? Um, it came about because Connor suggested it um, and he suggested it quite early on or maybe a year or two ago or something nearly, two, nearly two years ago and um, it was a terrifying prospect to me and I really didn't want to do it, but I also kind of thought, well, I understand from his point of view, it could be good for the film, and I also kind of figured it was the kind of thing that I would look back on afterwards and think I was glad I had done that. It's, it became slightly less terrifying once the yes vote had happened, because it was exactly a week to the yeah. day after the yes vote that we did it. So I think I, that in that last week, I was slightly less terrified because I was like, well, even Mayo voted yes, <laughs> you know, so. This is going far to go. <laughs> nostalgic when you're kind of looking back on the things you've done in, in your longer life and, and looking back the alternative Miss Ireland pageant and stuff was there anything how having seen the film that you want to relive or bring back or do again no <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sort of a firm believer in not looking back and always sort of looking forward and um, of course there's things I you know I, I look back and I love you know, parts of my life or things that I did and whatever but I don't ever want to go and redo them you know yeah. Um, and of course there's a million things in, that I would never do again because they were appropriate when I was 25 and gorgeous and would not be appropriate now. Yeah. And Connor, how do you feel now that, it, now that it's done after 
you know, half a decade the film has made? I'm thrilled. Uh, it's, you know, it has turned into something actually much bigger than I think any of us thought that it would. Um, it's become something that, you know, I've, I've had people come up to me, not quite on the street, but people that I've met once or twice, and who are just thrilled and just saying thank you for making this film. So it just feels like we were in a very privileged and very lucky place to be able to make this film and we're delighted with how it's, how it's gone.